Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. I got a bad, bad feeling about stuff, guys. I don't proclaim to be the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm not the smartest person. When I took the graduate record examination, which is an entry-level test to go into grad school uh, to do uh, graduate work in psychology and experimental psychology, I scored very poorly on the verbal aspect. I scored very poorly on the mathematical aspect. But the part where I shined was on the analytical component. And on that component, I got 100%, which is in like the top 1% of the population. So I don't proclaim to have all the answers, and I'm not the best at intellectualizing things, and I'm not uh, the best in terms of using my words eloquently and in a very impromptu, improvised fashion. I'm no Ben Shapiro. But I do have a good bird's eye view of things because the way my mind works is I'm always thinking big picture. I just, everything is related to the big picture for me. When I say big picture, sometimes I'm talking about the outer space big picture. Now, I make videos like this because I care about the truth. I care about my subscribers. I know it doesn't help me a whole heck of a lot in terms of the algorithm because this kind of content competes with my gear review content and my very practical blue strip videos but I do it because I, I just feel compelled to speak my mind about certain things. So I don't make this video to scare you per se, but I make this video because this is what I'm seeing. I got a real, real bad feeling about what is going on in the world right now. Why are the Russians shooting down satellites? And why are the astronauts on the space station running for cover in their escape pods. I mean, this is something that just happened. Why are they doing this without giving them any forewarning about what's going on? Why the flex? This caused something called a rare debris generating event. And what that is, if you've ever seen the movie Gravity, I don't need to explain it to you, with Sandra Bullock. It's actually a pretty good movie. The same plot of that movie is now playing out in real life. You cannot make this up. What happens is if you shoot a satellite in space and it, you don't uh, pulverize it, for lack of better terms, you don't obliterate it completely, the little pieces fly off in all directions at the speed of like a bullet because those satellites are going around Earth's orbit at I don't know how fast, but really, really fast. And if they were to collide in with, with any other satellite, it would be like a mini meteor hitting a satellite. Well, maybe not that extreme, but it would be catastrophic. And it would cause a cascading effect because the more uh, of debris out there, the greater the risk that that debris is going to hit other satellites. And that debris field would continue to grow and grow as it consumed more and more satellites, potentially just killing all the satellites. Now that would probably take a long, long time and perhaps there is some way to resolve this that I'm not aware of. But this could cause serious damage to communications, to navigations, to weather systems, to how we uh, communicate on the internet. We've talked about every possible apocalyptic scenario, but that's one that a lot of people haven't considered, is space wars. And the writing is on the wall. So why is it that that's happening right now? Why is the language being used by both Beijing and the USA becoming more and more aggressive and official? Why is the line in the sand being drawn? You know, to hear Xi Jinping talk about how any of the, any of the enemies will be crushed if they uh, attempt to get in their way of obviously expanding the territory into Taiwan is, is something that not a lot of people are paying attention to. I'm hearing more and more talk now about nuclear weapons and nuclear armament buildups and how China's starting to build up their nuclear weapons again. And just to, to hear people talk about that, that was something a couple of years ago, people weren't talking about that. Why are the Australians building nuclear powered submarines? Okay, why is there this stuff going on on the Belarusian border? And how is that? Uh, divide between the east and west that's now growing between Europe, that's what they're calling it, okay? Poland is somehow this 
a gateway into Europe all of a sudden. And, you know, all of a sudden it's East versus West again. It's the Russians and the Belarus against the West. Why, oh why, is this never-ending thing that's been going on for two years just keep on resurging and resurging? Why is there more draconian methods being employed in China and more and more lockdowns, more and more people being shut into their homes? Okay, why is this still going on? Why are societies ever so incrementally starting to uh, chip away at the civil liberties of the inhabitants of those countries as you have more police in the streets in places where you know people particularly don't need them and where places where you need them they're not there because they've either resigned for various reasons or there's just not the funding because uh, crime is through the roof why is drug use through the roof why are we seeing record drought in 2021 that has decimated food production yet now we are seeing these just wild weather extremes like on the west in vancouver they've experienced uh, some pretty catastrophic flooding recently china has experienced some insane flooding this year juxtaposed with droughts so you see we're, we're living in the age of extremes where you once had people who were fairly moderate and you once had moderate weather you now have extreme weather and people who are very polarized and on complete opposite end of the spectrums. And the more people go left, the more the other people feel the need to go right until everybody just falls off the scale. And this is what you would expect to see in the run up to World War III, is you would expect to see civil unrest, uh, civil conflict potentially. I mean, just think about what's happened this year. January 6th, just think about what happened last year with the riots. Think about the, the military buildup that's now starting to, to come up and the saber rattling, okay, the climate disaster. All of these things indicate that we are in shit hits the fan, that this is just slow motion SHTF. Go and watch a video I made seven years ago called SHTF, the imminent pandemic. And I basically predicted this whole thing to a T. Go and watch the video. It's only got like 4,000 views. And it's probably, looking back, probably the most important video that I ever made. But I didn't understand the significance of it at the time. And I've realized now that all the things I talk about on this channel are going to come true because I do have a good grasp of what's going on. I don't always have a good grasp of what's going on on the microscopic scale of things, but my macro, my macro is pretty on point. It's just my timelines are usually way too aggressive. And if you can't see the writing on the wall right now, what's going on, I mean, the Russians are shooting down satellites and the astronauts are ducking for cover. You got Inside Edition reporting on food shortages and how grocery stores are using um, facades to mask the food shortages. You have distributors of all the various commodities that we enjoy here in the West raising their prices, some of them on their second and third round of price increases throughout 2021 already. And we have this buzzword now, supply chain disruptions. Everybody's talking about supply chain disruptions. It's kind of convenient that we've normalized it with that language and it's not the fact that maybe, just maybe, that's just the cover story for the fact that things are not going back to normal. Why is the Chinese government telling its population in a roundabout way or telling municipal and local authorities to stock up on food for the winter? Maybe it's not surprising that they've experienced one of the worst uh, winter storms on record recently and i mean in terms of snowfall a lot of people confuse snowfall with winter and say oh look this is why things aren't warming up because look how much snow there is no snow is actually more of a sign of warming snow is a sign of lots of moisture in the air which is the result 
of increased warming essentially on the whole. So we're seeing more extreme weather events and what they had in China a few weeks ago or a week ago I guess was a winter flood. There was snow drifts that were 12 feet high. All of these events around the world are pointing to the fact that we are reaching a tipping point. The time is going to come when it's undeniable to people. And by the time a lot of people realize it, it's going to be too late. And one of the uh, telltale signs for me that this is happening is that I'm starting to see a lot of people throw a nod my way, throw a message my way, asking for help or assistance. People who I never thought would have. And this is a sign to me that people who I never thought would consider preparedness are really starting to worry. And that could be the result of one of two things. That could be the result of just the, the lag and the time delay between the average person and realizing this stuff that we've been talking about for a long time. Myself happened to be seven years ago when I made that video called SHTF, the imminent pandemic. Or it's that the herd is sensing something that there's like this wisdom of the herd, you know, that that senses that something is on the horizon, the way the birds sense a, a earthquake is coming. And I say sense because the birds are able to feel the vibrations or whatever it is before we can. So it's not just some mystical thing. There's a causal reason for it. And it's that now the conditions are such that there's so many things happening around the world right now that it's, it's just virtually undeniable. I mean, why so many cyber attacks this year? And now they've kind of gone silent about it. They're, they're talking about these shutdowns and these various outages, but they're not calling them cyber attacks. And I think part of the reason for that is they don't want to startle people, number one, but they also don't want to uh, create uh, an environment that is going to uh, encourage people to do more ransom attacks, ransomware attacks. You don't want to make it public if you've succumbed to a cyber attack. I've, I've realized that now. And I think I talked about that in a video that I made on the topic is that nobody's going to want to admit to that. Okay. Just the way I talked about seven years ago, that nobody's going to want to admit that a lethal virus has left their borders. A virus that just so happens to be infecting every single mammal on earth or has the potential to, as far as I know. Something is going on, guys. I have a bad, bad feeling that this could be the beginning of the end. And I mean the beginning of our end. I don't think the whole thing is going to end. I think we're going to roll over and hopefully start anew on the other end of all this. I'm trying not to be dramatic, but you know, sometimes when I, when I go through these uh, momentary bouts of existential depression, I, I get some clarity about what's going on. I, I shouldn't call it depression. I don't really, it's more like uh, an apathy towards things, you know, because it's that my perceptual span of how screwed we are and my ability to distract myself are not at par with one another. So I can occasionally really drift into this. And people think, oh, you're just fear-mongering to sell stuff. You guys don't know me, if that's what you think. You really don't know me. I am not a shock jock. I am not good at deceiving people. In fact, in most cases, I wear my heart on my sleeve. If I'm feeling a certain way, you guys are going to know about it. It's going to come out across in the videos, okay? And... Lately, I've just been, haven't been distracted enough and I'm seeing things way too clearly. Some people say, oh, that's a good thing that you're seeing things clearly. It is, but when you, in my brain, it isn't because I see the whole chessboard and it's become pretty obvious what's going on. We are at war and it's not just going to be a war between two countries. I think that's another myth of this duality, East versus West. It's not going to be a duality. I mean, you got the Russians selling S-400 missile systems, which are one of the world's most advanced missile defense systems, to virtually everybody. India, Turkey, Iran, 
all sides of the, the spectrum are being sold these, okay? And maybe they're selling them to the countries which are perhaps on the fence of whose side they're going to take when it all goes down. I don't know. But it appears to me that there's not just going to be two players. There could be several players in the big conflict. I mean, the Belarusian thing on the border with the immigrants, that is only going to intensify moving forward as the climate changes intensify and as these countries become more and more destabilized in the Middle East, especially having a lot of a Western influence withdrawn from some of those regions, although some people might argue otherwise. Some people might argue that there might be more stability as a result of that, but I think you're going to see more and more refugees and that's going to cause more polarization within countries. So you're going to see more civil war within countries, more authoritarianism. And before most major global conflicts, you see this authoritarianism and this civil unrest within individual countries as they're trying to sort their shit out because it's all coming to a head. And unlike World War II, we live in a globalized marketplace. If the shit were to go down today, no country has the ability to be self, completely self-reliant, although some countries have it more than others. We don't really have the industrial base that we used to, especially a modernized industrial base. I mean, you got the chips being made in Taiwan, you got the labor in China, you got the parts coming from Africa or the uh, raw materials coming from Africa. So we live in this global supply chain. And that wasn't the case in WW2. So people were far more resilient than, than we are now. You know, people had gardens. More people lived in rural environments. We are screwed if it goes down right now. And that's not even getting into the culture wars and, and all these other layers of conflict. Things are coming to a head, guys, is what I'm trying to say. And this existential depression that I occasionally get allows me to see it clearly. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I regret making these videos because I know it trips me up with the algorithm. But like I say, I got to tell it like I see it. And that's how I see it. Let me know how you see it, or hear it, or smell it. See, there we go again. Thanks for watching, guys. Canadian Prepper out.